After setting Daigangera free on Kobo, we're off to find Seer and seek her guidance. We head to Jeddah next, and I was hoping that we'd actually get to explore Jeddah City, but... Never been to Jeddah. We headed to the city? Nah, last I heard, Seer was holed up in the desert with some weird hermits called Anchorites. No <laughs> such luck. I just wish she'd pick a more lively cult. We're getting a signal from Jeddah. That's Seer. I sent word ahead that we'd be visiting. Let me put it up on the holo projector. As we receive a message from the cult that Seer is with, music begins. It starts initially with the horns giving a warmth. But as Cal asks about Seer and doesn't receive an answer to his question, we begin to worry. The music aids this worry by introducing the woodwinds and the eeriness of the half-step. Yeah, hi. Is Seer there? We eagerly await your arrival. However, a dust storm is sweeping over our location. It is too dangerous for your ship to land. Other dissonances and clusters enter as well as the music rises, adding further tensions to the music as Cal feels frustration at the situation. Okay, I got it. Disembark with caution. Imperial patrols have been seen in the high desert. Thanks for the warning. As we arrive on the desert planet of Jeddah, there's no music. It gives us time to see the planet in its near lifelessness, no void of music yeah. as well. The bass clarinet is the first instrument to enter with an ascending half-step, followed by the parallel motions of thirds in the upper woodwinds. The theme that enters leans heavily on the E harmonic minor scale, but in particular are these leaps to the lowered sixth. Climb. Hang on, BD. This inflection of the lowered sixth going down to the fifth in prominence begins to give us the illusion of a Phrygian scale or even an Aeolian dominant, which I was immediately keeping an ear out for. That's because the Aeolian dominant scale is what composers love to go to whenever they are composing a setting in an Egyptian or Middle Eastern land. And while Jeddah isn't actually the Middle East, it definitely represents that in many ways within Star Wars. This is further supported by the tight parallel thirds I mentioned earlier, along with the double reeded woodwinds that are used to subtly reference the point. I like the way Gordian Hobb allude to this scale without actually giving us something that sounds stereotypical though. As Cal reaches the peak, the theme returns. This time it's answered by a sweeping flail in the high strings as well. The tight dissonances and brass attacks warn of the dangers hidden beneath the sand as we continue. Stay off the sand, buddy. Don't want to end up a snack. Hmm. Looks like a prayer wheel. Voices enter as well as we continue to give even more of an ancient feeling to these ruins. As we begin to move through the ruins, an imperial dropship flies by. As it does, a dissonant chord enters through the sound of the dropship itself. It's followed by a very faint version of the theme of danger that's been following us through this game so far. Low haunting sounds continue to follow us as we continue to explore this part of the ruins. As Cal finds stormtroopers investigating a speeder, music enters again with another danger theme that I'm still tempted to call an imperial theme as a flurry.
we're suddenly ambushed though by a jet trooper as ravenous chords come in in the brass. The strings flail in half steps as he struggles. As the battle begins, syncopations come through in the brass as the snare drum pushes us forward. Here we go. The horns raise through the danger theme again, this time fully pronounced and in its full two-phrase form. It comes back two more times in fragmentation in different voices before driving rhythms push us forward through the chord progression. Dissonances take us to a high point of tension before Marin's welcome theme comes through in the trombones as we see our Night Sister companion from Fallen Order. And I've got to say, seeing Marin in actual action here was awesome. I do not want to mess with this Night Sister. Cal's theme lightly enters as he gladly addresses Marin. You've been watching me? Her theme responds as she approaches like him, times. reflecting the ties and relationship between Surprise these two. I thought they'd send someone a bit more uh, unfamiliar. I would not be so quick to judge, Cal Castus. Much has changed since we last saw each other. I can see that. Come, my speeder is this way. Your land speeder? But the moment is short-lived as they're interrupted by more brass attacks and Imperial troopers. The cue from before Marin returns as we again hear the powerful Imperial theme in the horns. As Cal and Marin continue to explore and find their way out, high strange strings enter. This is followed by a parallelism. This cue began to remind me of Debussy's Nuage, with its strained high pitches and parallel motion in the chords. Cal accidentally brings down more of an archway than he intends, and the danger is accentuated by a flute. As Marin shows off her new powers and restores the archway, her theme triumphantly comes in. However, it fades away as we understand that she is weakened by this act as well. Incredible. That looked exhausting. You need a break? Cal and Marin finally make it to the oasis where the spammels are. Light music begins as they ride the spammel. Again, the dominant to lowered sixth returns throughout, giving us that Arabian feeling of the half-step again. However, a very romantic horn solo plays over everything as well, creating an overwhelmingly enchanting track. You've avoided Seer for years. Why visit her now? I need her help. We're looking for something connected to the Order. Interesting. Are you still upset with us for leaving? I didn't see it coming, Marin. All of us going our separate ways. I understand, Cal. But we had our reasons. As the storm picks up, so does the music. The hemiola of twos and threes pushes the music and energy forward as the spammel picks up its pace to outrun the storm. Cal and Marin are bucked from the beast as it panics. As Cal hits the ground, the music levels off on a low note. 
The silence after the energetic music is haunting as we hear the wind ripping as we find our way through the sandstorm. As we continue through the sandstorm, we run into a group of stormtroopers and an ATST. The music for this was surprisingly lacking considering the severity of the boss, but we have plenty of experience with scout transports by now and quickly deal with the giant. The music finally feels reassuring as we find shelter after the battle, knowing that the danger is behind us for now. As we settle down, the music becomes softer and calmer. As Marin casts a spell over the fire, the music begins mysteriously. Look into the fire. It will warm you. Keep you company on dark, lonesome nights, yes? But left unchecked, it will consume everything in its path until there is only ash. As she changes from talking about the horrors of fire to the warmth of fire, the music relaxes as well, reflecting Cal also taking a moment to relax. It's a touching and moving moment between these two old friends that feels too close to not be the foreshadowing of something romantic. And I you. I have But I'm also curious what all of you think. What did you think of Marin's introduction, and what about the music for Jetta? It was scarce, yet it worked for a scarce desert planet. I'm breaking the game down as I play it, similar to how I would watch a weekly TV show, so there are elements that may make more sense to me as I release later videos for further missions. Tell me in the comments below what you think, and consider checking out my Patreon page using the link in the description, where you can help support this channel for, for as little as $1 a month, or download PDFs and MP3s of Are projects as I complete leaving? them, along with other perks at higher tiers. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to learn more about the music of a galaxy far, far away, and as always, may the... be with you.